I've been teaching English for a while, and my speciality is blended learning. It sort of came in the way, and uh, we instantly fell in love. Okay, um, to get started with this session, uh, first of all, I have to tell you that I'm not going to burden you with numbers today, and uh, I'm not going to uh, tell you uh, data and uh, facts that you will forget the moment you hear them, and definitely by the time you get out of this room. I'm going to tell you ideas and how to make your blended learning course in the language school a better one. Um, which uh, feeds into the idea of uh, the main idea of this whole conference, from trends to plans, and in my uh, interpretation from plans to implementation. Because everywhere it seems to be that blended learning is the buzzword. Okay? We have to have a blended learning course. Everybody is planning to have a blended learning course, but then they don't really know how to do it, and at the end it fails and then it creates the impression that blended learning is not working at all. Uh, to me, uh, I believe that the success of a blended learning course it depends on the devilish little details and a tremendous amount of work. And uh, I'm going to share you the work which we have done in our language school to make the blended learning course a better one. First, to get started, uh, I prepared a little quiz for you, which you can see on the screen. I would like to talk uh, with your partners uh, Group of threes, group of fours, and try to answer these questions. Is it right? Yeah. Is it right? Okay. So you have about three, four minutes to answer these questions. If you have no idea, just tip. Okay. Group of four, group of four. Go ahead. Three billion. One. One. 
Really or what? People. No, 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 I'm talking about money here. Cash. <laughs> That's what matters, not the students. It's growing. It's growing, it's definitely growing. But what's the size, what do you think? Can you do an estimate? It's measured in billions as well. Okay, according to research I found on the internet, the uh, size of the global e uh, English learning market is about roughly between, estimates vary between $35 billion and $40 billion. And out of that, the chunk of e-learning, <coughs> selling e-learning materials is $2.58 billion. Not much, but increasing, mm -hmm. uh, marking the 10% limit soon, and uh, dollars, okay, so almost two and a half billion. Uh, it's a good share in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, can make money on this. All right, how would you define blended learning? Okay, I'm not even going to ask this. I'm not even going to wait for an answer because there are about as many definitions for blended learning as many scholars trying to define it. Uh, my favorite definition is by Reed and Young. It says uh, combining face to face classes and uh, online materials, uh, using the best from both, and by this, yield better results and lower the costs. There's a, a twist in this definition, isn't it? Not this scholaristic definition, but a little bit more on the materialistic side. All right. In your opinion, what are the three major areas of difficulties related to implementation of blended learning programs? What do you think? Sorry? Technical difficulties, okay? Time. Time? Programs afterwards, and now it's, 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 it's 
quite uh, developed. But uh, nonetheless, I'm going to show you this case study and what we did, and then I'm going to show you what went wrong, and I'm going to show you also how we mended these wrongs and made them right. Okay? So, first of all, we did a uh, needs analysis. The company is uh, called, uh, I'm not sure if I can mention the name, it's a huge beverage uh, making company. Probably have heard about the brand, okay? You have all enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, they define themselves as innovative and ready for change company. It's an American company, by the way. Uh, they also wanted to use a little learning because they felt that they have to uh, change not only their ways of education, but also uh, the way of uh, the way how students behave, uh, the way they study. We will talk about this also in more detail later on. But nonetheless, innovative, ready for the change. Uh, the goals were to cut costs, proper goal, uh, same pace and less face-to-face -face lessons. It means blended learning is typically half the time spent in face-to-face -face lessons, uh, but they wanted the same pace. So, with, by, by, by which I mean by the end of the year, they wanted to reach the same uh, uh, progress as if it was a non-blended learning class, classic. Bridging the physical distance. This company has a lot of uh, stations around the country. Uh, students don't have that much time to come to class, so we can bridge the physical distance by giving them some material which they can do anytime they want. Mm -hmm. And utilizing technology to the most efficiency, well, it's a goal they set for themselves, they would love to do so. <coughs> okay, materials. We used uh, a book called In Company by Macmillan, and the VLE, the Virtual Learning Environment, was also Macmillan, uh, Macmillan English Campus. And boards, tablets, laptops, everything was everything, everything was supplied, so we didn't have any technical difficulties. We can say that we had none of those. Everything was perfect. So what's the again? Virtual learning okay. environment. Okay. You have other names for it, but that's the most commonly used nowadays in citations. Yeah, sure, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to interrupt me because I can okay. <laughs> This is how a new English campus looks like. This is the virtual mm -hmm. learning environment. It's completely uh, working from itself. Uh, students can browse and uh, do the courses. If you look at the, uh, this works. <coughs> Good. There's the uh, course material and uh, students name. They log in and they do <coughs> the exercises which are related to the face-to-face -face classes. So far, so good. Um, yeah, uh, we did uh, a lot of monitoring. Uh, we did, of course, class observations, observe the teachers, how they did, uh, regular meetings with clients to see uh, what they want, and so we can, uh, can deal with their, uh, their needs. And we sent monthly progress reports, which look like this. Um, this is each student, uh, how much time they have spent online, how many resources they have completed, and their logs. So these are monthly reports we've sent to the uh, company uh, to see and they could actually assess their learners and see how they progress. Okay, I'm not going to waste more time with this because I think so much you have heard about all blended learning programs. The assessment was with a final report and written and oral testing by independent language school. Okay, this looks fine so far, but we had problems. Problems with the students were mainly that they, uh, the lack of productivity. Okay, they didn't really uh, do uh, uh, anything extra. All right, they never logged in, or what well, they did, of course, but they never logged in as much as we wanted them to. Uh, lack of proper introduction to the for the learners about the system we made a mistake too. They didn't really know how to use it, what to do with it. Poor online performance. This is related to the first two, and um, you know, if the online performance is poor, the whole program falls through, because um, they're not completing the adequate amount, they're not putting in the adequate amount of work. Um, students have had excessive workload at the company. Well, this is a factor that we could only mildly influence by talks with the uh, management. This interest in the online material, now that's something we never expected to happen, because we thought, oh my god, this looks beautiful, everybody's going to love it. And plus, they are young, they are kind of techno, X, whatever, generation Z, I don't even know what they call it nowadays. But no, they just didn't show enough interest, and we couldn't find out why. And the sense of forsakenness. 
I don't know if you use this word in English or not, for Satanist. Yeah. Anyway. It's like they, they felt they felt a little they felt quite lonely and they they um they didn't have that spirit to keep up learning. So the attendance or not the attendance but the uh the, the work sort of went down as the course went on. And we had to we had to jump in and find out solutions. Can I ask how about the students were as teenagers? Uh, the students are all between, uh, I would say, 20 and 40. Yeah, it's a company. It's all between 20 and 40, mostly uh, with uh, college or university education. Uh, highly motivated students, so I would say that could have been a problem. We had problems with the methodology as well, and the teacher. I, I didn't write teachers because uh, I thought it was more a methodological problem than a teacher problem. Well, the staff's lack of digital competence. Um, yeah, uh, this is something which is difficult to bridge because it takes extensive training and it takes a lot of time to build uh, digital competence among your staff. Um, but if they lack this, then they are not going to feel uh, comfortable using VLEs and using blended learning. And if they don't feel comfortable, learners will not feel comfortable either. So uh, it's a big problem. Flaws in methodology. Uh, one and a half or sandwich curriculum. This means that although that blended learning should be like uh, like cogwheels, uh, the blended material and the face-to-face uh, uh, -face material feeding into each other. Mm -hmm. And instead of this, we had a sandwich curriculum in a way that uh, there was one face-to-face -face class, and then the online material, and then the face-to-face -face class again, uh, almost like a homework, which is which it is definitely not. If students consider the blended learning material as homework, the blended learning is not going to work. And this interest in online materials uh, among the teachers as well, lack of cooperation, group work, and, rel and relevance of material, this means that um, teachers also thought, because of this sandwich thing uh, I explained, uh, teachers thought that um, the online uh, material is individual, and that's all the students do individually, do the exercises, and that's it. Which is completely wrong. Uh, to keep up the spirit, uh, teachers need to uh, make, uh, to create an online uh, community between the learners. Mm -hmm. And if there's no, and the community would keep them up and keep their motivation up. If there's no community in language learning, there is no language learning. It falls apart. Okay. Um, the relevance of material was that although. Uh, the uh, material, as I said, was produced by the same company and it should be uh, related to the book or the online material to the book. It still had flaws in it and uh, teachers would have, uh, have to, would have to mend this in a way because uh, if the students don't see the relevance of the online material that is strongly related to what they do in class, they will not do it because uh, they need to feel the relevance. I don't need to explain this further. So let's go on. Um, but before we go on and go to the solutions, I have to talk about the changing roles a little bit. Okay, um, do you see what's wrong with this picture? Yes. What? There's a wolf there. Where? Yeah. That's a wolf, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So basically, uh, <laughs> sheep are led by wolves. Very right. mm -hmm. happy wolves. They're happy, yeah, they're like, <laughs> now we've done that you know, for a lifetime. Now, uh, this is what um, your senior teachers feel when a young teacher comes in and starts babbling about e-learning, blended learning, <laughs> flashes his tablet, starts to, you know, to do some mumbo jumbo in it, and they have no clue what's going on, okay? And they feel intimidated because they've been teaching for 20, 25 years, they have great experience, and they don't like uh, young, you know, whatever upshots to you know, to, uh, to lecture them on how to teach. This is what I call the uh, teachers from the old guard. Okay. Uh, which could, uh, oh yeah, which could, which, which, could, um, uh, which could result in the collapse of your whole blended learning program because these teachers will not be happy to use these systems. And they will also probably spread word that blended learning, falsely, that blended learning is not uh, equal to face-to-face -face classes because it's inferior to it because it, I don't know. So 
basically there's going to be like a little uh, hidden agenda all the time and everything because they are afraid of using new technology. This happens all the time, so open conversation, trainings, uh, and open conversation with staff is essential to, uh, to uh, as I said in the beginning, to create a culture in the institution uh, for blended learning. And from source to guide, that's the other exchange that teachers um, are feel quite uncomfortable about, especially in Hungary, uh, especially Hungarian teachers who are used to full well, frontal teaching. And uh, <coughs> because in the frontal teaching, they're the source of knowledge. Okay, they are in control of the situation. They tell you something, and the students just listen in aid. Okay, but in blended learning, you are rather the guide than the source. You need to guide the learners through the whole process. Tell them how to study, how to learn, how to find out new information. And for some teachers, it's quite stressful. Well, stressful would be too much to say, but can create uncomfortable situations. This is the next picture I have for you to, uh, to understand how the learners feel. Okay? So, yeah, this is how the learners feel when they are told, that, okay, do you get my point? Here's the VLA, here's the exercise you're going to do, do it. Okay? By the way, you can consult with your friends meanwhile, email them, uh, ask them for help. Here is the blog they're doing, here is the Google Drive, they uploaded some extra data. Download it, listen to it, and they are just not used to it. Okay? They're used to sitting in a chair and used to the frontal teaching method of the teacher telling them what to do, and that's it. <coughs> you know, you know this feeling, right? So, changing student roles is this thing. They are not used to autonomy or responsibility. Uh, their digital literacy is sometimes lacking, especially in Hungary, especially with older generation. I'm not trying, sorry, I'm not trying to offend anyone here. And the frontal versus communicative. Uh, that's also something they're not used to. Uh, I'm talking mostly Hungary here, but I'm sure it happens in other countries as well. Uh, I'm sure I could tell you examples from other places. Okay. Let's get down to the solutions then. What we found is that uh, first and most important thing is the support and tailoring of the course material. Tailoring the course material means that although it's tremendous work, but the uh, blended learning enables you to tailor the course if you want to, or if you wish, by individually by every student. Okay? Uh, <coughs> this can be done by the language school. This has to be done by the teacher. Okay, because uh, it's, uh, it would be an incredible burden of one person sitting in the school. Or you could share the work between the school and the teacher, but you would definitely have to tailor each and every student's material according to their needs. Provide feedback and support from language school. That's something the language school can do. You can send emails regularly to the learners. You can keep up the spirit. You can make them feel that you are behind them, that you are supporting them. <coughs> Don't just you know, let the course go and see how it goes. Um, support the learners, uh, send them regular feedback, and do your part. The teacher training. Um, what we did is um, we had a lot of discussions on this on how to solve these problems that I mentioned previously. And of course, clear guidelines and manuals. We created manuals for teachers uh, going into blended learning methodology, methodology as far as what to do before the class in the class, after the class, and monthly. It's all written down, PDF sent to the teacher. Okay? Telling you an example. For example, before or before the course or the class, the teacher should of course look up to online material. We found a positive and not surprising correlation between the teachers who spend more time online <coughs> and the students who spend more time online in their classes. Remember, I could look at the statistics. So in those classes where the teachers spend more time online, the students also spend more time online. So it's basically, at the bottom line is the teacher. So the teacher is interested, the students will be as well. Um, so before the class, the teachers check the material and see how the learners have done. In the class, while they're teaching, they also observe and make field notes about the learners' progress and their needs. After the class, they assign tailor-made material for the learners. So the relationship between the blended learning, uh, sort of DLE, and the uh, normal class is kept. Okay. 
ready-made online materials, sorry, networking, sharing ideas, yeah, uh, this I mean among teachers. You have to start creating, uh, this could either be a blog, a Facebook group, uh, as simple as, you know, just put a message on the billboard at a, uh, a teacher meeting to create a community of teachers who um, are interested in blended learning and doing blended learning. At this point, I have to tell you that uh, there are going to be teachers who are never going to do blended learning, and you have to accept that. Uh, they are also very good teachers, and they um, and there are also learners who will never accept blended learning methodology at all. So um, uh, there's always need for that. Um, but keep this in mind, and I, I am borrowing this from a smarter person than me, that uh, teachers are never going to be replaced by computers. But teachers who know how to know, know how to use computers will replace those who don't. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, be careful with this. If you tell them, if you tell this to your teachers, uh, they will mark it. Okay. Uh, but nonetheless, create a community with those who feel good about this, uh, with those teachers who, who feel uh, confident in online materials, and start, you know, spreading the word. Among the other staff members. Ready made online materials makes our teachers work easier. Okay, if you have a VLE you're using, then you of course you have it. If you don't, um, then uh, it's, um, it's a very good idea to put together a list of online materials teachers can use. Okay, you have uh, a set of websites or something ready for them to you know to reach, like a library. Okay, it's always good to save teachers time. They will be more happy to work with you. Constant assessment of learner needs and assigning material, I talked about this previously. And the constant assessment of classes and teacher work. Visit the classes, see if your teachers are doing it properly. Um, because of the change of roles, um, teachers um, tend to listen to, uh, think that they are actually doing the blended learning methodology, but on the other hand, they are not doing it at all, and they are teaching in their old, comfortable way. Okay, you have to be aware if this is happening or not. Mm. Student training. You have to also train the students because they don't know how to use the system, for example. This might seem obvious, but it's not. You have to um, actually tell the learners how to use the virtual learning environment, spend at least a class with introducing them uh, to the environment. Learning strategies, tell them strategies how to uh, communicate with each other, how to create an online community, create a community yourself, like do a Facebook group, uh, do a Google uh, upload, uh, start it for your learners so they will be able to communicate with each other and uh, maintain a group, a sense of belonging, uh, which would uh, eventually erase the feeling of forsakenness. And report to direct leader as well. Uh, if it's a company class, uh, that's what we did actually. Uh, the company wanted, so we sent a report to the direct leaders uh, about their achievements, with their monthly achievements. Um, in some cases, this actually resulted in better work. In what way resulted in? Sorry? Resulted in? In better work. Okay. But, um, so basically, um, if uh, you want to remember one thing from this whole uh, solution part, um, I think it would be this. And I'm so happy that I can show this picture because it was one of my favorite t-shirts. Okay. This is the one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it says, everyone is an individual by Dr. Martens. Okay. Um, this is what you have to remember, that everyone, you know, has different needs different purposes, and blended learning is something that you can tailor and, you know, address everyone's individual needs. Okay. The results were increased online performance, outstanding attendance, great student-teacher relationship, good final exam results, and most importantly, we had change in learning attitudes. Learners became more autonomous, they became more proactive, they got used to the new method methodology, and later on, um, they actually, in other uh, trainings in the company, they started to use this kind of attitude, 
They started making groups that are on their own. They started um, proactively finding materials and sharing it with each other. Okay, so uh, uh, among all these, uh, I find this one the most important achievement in this program. And of course, we have more experienced teachers now. Now we have a core uh, of about um, 20, 25 teachers who are able to do a blended learning class at a time. Okay. So food for thought by the end. This one is interesting. The amount of work that was put into this language course would have broken the back of an ox. Okay, so it means it was incredible work that we put here. And uh, by this I mean that um, you know you can't just put the same kind of work into every blended learning course, or every course you do in the language school, it's just impossible, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so the second one is, even though the classes were blended, the level testing was still done on paper. Okay? And teachers should become mentors to spread the e-learning culture in the language school to keep up the spirit. I'm going to give you now another two or three minutes to share your ideas about these three points. I'm not going to add my own yet. Okay? But in the same groups you have talked at the beginning, please tell your partners, what do you think of these three points? What are the conclusions that you draw from these?
pretty interesting points here. And um, well, let me just briefly address these three before I actually get to the questions. Uh, well, the first one um, is my answer before this that uh, the next step is to actually make automatisms from these uh, things that we have created. So basically, the know-how is there. Now what we have to do is to organize it into a flow, and then it, you know, it shortens the amount or it uh, lessens the amount of work tremendously. And eventually, it becomes part of the language school's everyday program. So right now, we are working on organisms and trying to create, um, trying to create uh, workflows for each process. Uh, the least amount of work. The first time it's always difficult to create. Uh, the second time it's always easier to reproduce. Could you give us an example? Sorry. An example, yes. Uh, for example, the first time we had to create the teacher's manual, how to teach. Now I just send it in the email to the teacher because it's already there. Uh, that's for example one, one, one thing. Uh, the next, um, another good example would be to um, uh, the, uh, the material how to uh, find out what the learners really need. And uh, before that, we didn't know if to ask the learner, uh, give them a sheet they fill out, or to test them at the beginning of the course, and according to that level test, or according to the place of the test, find out in which forms they have the weakness or not. Now it's automatic that the teacher, after every uh, class, makes field notes, and at the end of the month, the teacher sends it to the language school, and together we uh, assign the materials. So now it's automatic. Teachers know it, I know it, there's a day for it. But these are mainly materials for the, for that particular problem area. Yes, yes, exactly. The materials are also in it, yeah. Okay, uh, this second point is that uh, there's still a long way to go. Okay, because, uh, all right, but this is nonsense. Okay, so why would we do anything paper-based? Uh, so our thinking is still a little bit behind. <coughs> we still don't believe ourselves what we can do with the method learning. And teachers should become mentors to spread the learning culture in the language school to keep up the spirit. Uh, it's the language school owner's uh, responsibility to, to allow this and to encourage this and to support this because uh, this is the only way that your blended learning course will be successful. Okay. One more interesting thing I wanted to mention is that I always talked about the Macmillan English campus, the virtual learning environment. Uh, it's a ready-made environment, but the real blended learning, or not the real blended learning, but the, uh, the more creative blended learning is when teachers find materials themselves. <laughs> There's, there are limitless possibilities on the internet to find videos, materials, millions of sites already there, ready-made materials that the teacher can just grab and use up for uh, whatever class purpose. Uh, the next step in this whole process is to uh, like, I'm sure all of us know this similar with the bicycle, you know, first you hold it with a rod and then you let it go. This would be the next step when you let go of the teacher to go on be creative on their own. Okay? And so this sums up my little presentation and uh, it's time for <laughs> questions. <laughs> Please, don't hesitate. Questions, anybody? There was a question there. Uh, before. The question was, who is going to pay for the teachers? Who's going to pay? Not over there. Right. The gentleman over there says, who's going to pay the teacher for the extra work they're doing? Uh, my answer to the question is, uh, the quote I said before, that computers will never replace teachers, but teachers who know how to use computers will replace sooner or later those who don't. Uh, the teacher has to accept this extra burden for a while. But uh, sooner or later, uh, as the blended learning market is expanding, as I showed you at the beginning, uh, there will be a larger demand for teachers who are able to use this uh, kind of uh, program or methodology. And um, yeah, the teacher's payment is the experience they get in this material right now. And the classes they get, because if they don't know the blended learning methodology, they don't get blended learning classes. And if companies want blended learning classes, that's all they get. So. This is how it goes right now. I know, but as I showed you, it's a wolf's world. So there are wolves around in the top line. Can I ask how do teachers react to, to this kind of problem? Because I find that 
uh, the amount of time you spend online outside the face-to-face -face situation. Yep. It's quite a lot compared to how, you would, how much time it would require you to solve the same problem face-to-face. Uh, -face. So for example, creating a community mm -hmm. uh, is much easier if everybody is there face-to-face. Okay, do a few things. But to do that online, you have to uh, write to every single yes. student. So it takes a lot more time of your own, which yes. you're not paid for. Uh, how do teachers react uh, to this kind of situation? Look, it depends on the language school, how generous the language school is with the remuneration. Mm -hmm. All right? I've heard about language schools who actually pay for the extra time. It depends on the agreement you have with your teachers. Uh, in Hungarian language schools, it's not very popular. It's not very well, uh, very often it happens that they get the extra money for it. Um, but uh, sooner or later, I'm sure you will have to do an agreement with your teacher. It's an individual agreement every language school has to make for their own. Uh, first, of course, they weren't happy about it, but then later on they realized that, it's, uh, for example, you don't have to correct tests because they do it online and it's self-corrected. Uh, self the material does it for you. They don't have to photocopy that much. They don't have to, um, they have to do the material once, but if they did it once, it's online, they just reassign it again. So after a while, the amount of work decreases drastically. That's when they started to love it. And plus, as I said in the beginning, your teachers were never gonna use blended learning methodology because they are not digital natives. They, they are not used to these things. But teachers who are, they are used to this kind of extra work, you say, and they don't even count it extra. All right, emailing, blogging, uh, surfing the net is what they do. And that's what they would normally do. That's what they would do, they would network on Facebook. So it's not really a big difference for them to, uh, to, you know, to, to, I don't know, to say, to, to just upload something for a community, even though it's work, but they really, really enjoy it. I know it's hard to understand and it's difficult to, to, to like, to believe this, but it's true. That's what's happening. I have a question, because in the school where we are, we've kind of started doing this on a small scale, and it's hard to understand what's going on. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to understand what's going on. Yeah. And it's hard to understand what's going on. And we always want to find more, and, okay, you build up your data, and then you get sick of these materials, and then you start again. And I don't think the work actually ever stops. Um, but I, I am a highly practical person, so this to me looks very good in theory. I would really like you to give me an example of how you put together a unit, for instance, not, not a unit, um, a topic, present simple, for instance, in English. I'm just giving you an example because if you have a link, that would be great to send it to me. I'd actually like to see it so, exactly. so I can actually see the difference between the sandwich layered approach and the comms. I okay. would like to see that. Good. That's exactly, that's a very good idea. Uh, the reason I can't shoot right now is because we're running out of time, but I'm going to give you my email address after the session, okay? Or, as a matter of fact, um, I think you have it online, uh, because this whole thing is streamed on Facebook and everything. If not, then just come to me and I'll give it to you, and I'll send you definitely the link, anybody who's interested to see what's the difference, okay? I didn't want to go into details with this because I, uh, I wanted to do this on a higher level, you know, on a curricular level, and not getting into the, the class level. Uh, I think now it's time for online questions if we have any. Well, I don't have any questions. Good. Then it's time for number two or three questions if you have some. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah I do have one. Uh, you said that the, their online performance uh, became outstanding after your changes. How did you measure or what? How, how did, did you evaluate online performance? If you measure the time they spent on the online, in the online system because it's measurable. We saw the amount of uh, exercise they have, uh, or the number of exercises they have completed by these two. Okay, I'm asking this particular question because I've done a couple of online courses and I could laugh because I, I, I could just click my way through the material without learning a lot. <laughs> and I also could spend time online <laughs> doing totally different things. Um, and I'm, I'm wondering how you can improve that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, with the VLE we were using, it's uh, actually measuring the time you're actually spending with the exercise, mm -hmm. not while you're logged in. Mm -hmm. So that problem is eliminated. If you're not actually doing the exercise, then you're not spending time online. And the material is quite well structured, actually. Uh, you wouldn't be clicking through this. Mm -hmm. I mean, since you're an English teacher, you probably would, but. Uh, but uh, yeah, sometimes. Only oh, had to resist the temptation many times. Yeah, but, I mean sometimes, sometimes it, 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 you know, for learners, I see 
um, and we've been observing them doing it, it's quite difficult. So I don't think that there is any problem with the, with the difficulty of it. So uh, I didn't see these problems. Exactly, exactly. Well, to me, that is not that important, you know, because you can do it five times and then at the fifth you will be much better as uh, the first. But, uh, but, you know, they spend time with it, practice with it, and that's also one of the points. Yeah. But yeah, sure, the measure is the percentage. The main, most important thing is that they go online and do it. And the main point of this presentation is basically how to make them do it, how, how not, to, not to lose them somewhere in the middle. Okay. All right. Uh, well, that concludes uh, this little presentation. Uh, thank you very much for coming. It was a pleasure for me to have you here. I hope I could show you something new. And uh, if you want my email address or anything, contacts, or you have any questions that you were afraid to ask uh, in front of the others, then you can come to me after the end of the session. Thank you very much.